Thank you for completing this orientation to be approved as a 4-H leader in the Wyoming 4-H program. This session will cover the Volunteer Protection Act. It will also cover sexual harassment, which is required training by the University of Wyoming for all UW employees and volunteers. Volunteers are granted immunity from civil liability under the Volunteer Protection Act as long as the volunteer was acting within the scope of their responsibilities. Your scope of responsibilities as a 4-H volunteer leader includes any reasonable activity that supports a 4-H project or the 4-H program. For example, teaching the kids ski lessons would not be within the scope of your official 4-H duties since we do not have a 4-H skiing project. The volunteer was properly licensed. Transporting youth in a personal vehicle without a valid driver's license would mean you were not properly licensed, or driving a school bus without a CDL license is another example. As long as harm was not caused by willful or criminal misconduct, gross negligence, reckless misconduct, or a conscious, flagrant indifference to the rights or safety of the individual harmed. Liability protection does not include crime of violence, terrorism, or a hate crime, viola violation of civil rights or sexual abuse, misconduct while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. It also would not include acts of willful negligence. Negligence is defined as unintentional failure to exercise the care that a prudent or reasonable person usually exercises. Sexual harassment includes unwelcome solicitation of sexual activity or other sex-linked behavior by the promise of a reward, inappropriate and offensive sexual remarks or behavior, coercion of sexual activity by the threat of punishment, physical or verbal conduct of a sexual nature that interferes with an individual's work performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive working environment, and sexual assault. As a leader, please be conscious of anything you say or do that could be misinterpreted. Sexual harassment is not tolerated in the 4-H program. It is the responsibility of the 4-H program to provide an environment that is free from sexual harassment for all program participants. Training and other educational programs will be implemented to inform 4-H participants about sexual harassment and prevent sexual harassment from happening. All complaints of sexual harassment will be responded to promptly. Individuals who are found to have initiated sexual harassment will be subject to discipline appropriate to the offense and to their position within the 4-H program. Unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature are considered sexual harassment in any one of the following situations. A 4-H youth or adult participant is made to feel that he or she must tolerate sexually offensive behavior in order to receive instruction or to participate in any 4-H activity. A 4-H youth or adult participant feels that decisions which affect them will be based upon whether or not they agree to the sexual conduct. The sexual conduct interferes with a 4-H youth or adult participant's performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive 4-H environment. Conduct which may constitute sexual harassment includes, but is not limited to, verbal conduct, such as unwanted sexual advances, invitations, or comments, visual conduct, such as sexual posters, photography, cartoons, drawings, or gestures, physical conduct, such as unwelcome touching, blocking normal movement, or interfering with performance or progress, sexual bribery in order to receive a good evaluation or other benefit in return for sexual favors or to avoid loss, retaliation for having reported or threatened to report sexual harassment. In determining whether the alleged conduct constitutes sexual harassment, consideration shall be given to the record of the incident as a whole and to all of the circumstances, including the context in which the alleged incidents occurred. In 4-H, the targets of sexual harassment may be male or female, youth or adult, volunteer or employee. The initiator may also be a male or female, youth or adult, volunteer or employee. Any other person who is present at a 4-H activity may also be an initiator, including residents at a home where 4-H meetings or events are held, speakers and facilitators at 4-H conferences and events, and vendors. 
sexual harassment can exist regardless of the intentions of the invest instigator. The victim may be the direct object of the behavior or an observer of an interaction which results in limiting their ability to fully participate in or benefit from the program. If you have any questions about sexual harassment, please don't hesitate to con contact the County 4-H educator. Thanks for completing this orientation. Please remember to visit the State 4-H website to complete the evaluation. Once the, the evaluation is completed, your evaluation status will be forwarded to the County 4-H educator, and they will update the orientation in your official 4-H record.